Do we need to be taking CoQ10 supplements? And what are diabetics doing with honey? Find out today on this week's episode. Welcome to Ask the Beauty Advisor, a podcast that answers your health and beauty questions. Hosted by health and beauty advisor, Deanna Lynn. Hey there, welcome to Ask the Beauty Advisor. This is a podcast for anybody who loves health and beauty. It's also a great podcast for the beauty professional. I'm your host, Deanna, and I'm here to answer your health and beauty questions. And I'm feeling great today, so I hope everyone out there is having a great day and feeling great. I found a secret to explosive energy, which I'm going to be sharing with you soon, but not today. On today's episode, I'm going to be answering your questions about CoQ10, whether or not this is a supplement that you need to take, and how it affects the skin topically. I'm also going to be answering your question about honey. We're going to be talking about the health and beauty benefits of honey. You've got mail, Miss Lynn. Yes, I do have mail. I have two listeners' questions for you today. Let's see, who should I start with first? I'm going to read Jenny's question first. Dear Beauty Advisor, I have seen shelves of vitamins that contain an ingredient called CoQ10. I'm curious, what is CoQ10? How do you use it? Do I need it to benefit my health? I've even seen it in skincare. What kind of benefits or effects does it have on the skin? Would love to hear this topic on your show. Would love to understand exactly what CoQ10 really is. Now, Jenny, this is kind of a two-part question. So let's start with what is CoQ10? CoQ10 is a powerful antioxidant. And it's made by the body and is essential to providing our body cells with energy. Now, like everything else that our body makes for itself, as we age, the levels of CoQ10 go down. Levels drop both as we age and in health problems such as Alzheimer's, diabetes, cancer, Parkinson's disease, and heart disease. It's because of this association between the lower levels of CoQ10 and health issues, this is the reason that has led science to the study of the benefits of CoQ10 supplementation. It's been studied in both animals and humans, and yet there's no conclusions. There has been studies in animals that show CoQ10 can slow aging, strengthen muscles, and reduce heart stress. But there's been literally hundreds of studies with humans that has ended with conflicting results. It seems that for every study that shows benefits, there are seven more with no benefits. So I guess the real question here is, do you really need to add CoQ10 to your daily routine? Scientists estimate that we require about 3 to 5 milligrams a day. And about 75% of CoQ10 that we need is really manufactured by the body, and 25% comes from our diet. And the best sources of CoQ10 come from beef and chicken. There's about 3 milligrams in a 3-ounce serving. Fruits and vegetables, grains, and dairy have very small amounts. So if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, you may genuinely be low in CoQ10. Most traditional doctors are very reluctant in prescribing or recommending CoQ10 because it can actually interfere with medications for diabetics or high blood pressure. In fact, surprisingly enough, the American Heart Association and the American Cancer Association do not recommend taking CoQ10. So I guess the bottom line is that if you don't eat chicken or beef, you might consider taking small amounts of CoQ10, maybe 20 milligrams, and maybe only take it a couple of times a week. Because really, right now, there is really no clear evidence 
that states by using CoQ10 therapeutically, you can manage serious health problems. So now, Jenny, if you are thinking about taking CoQ10, I would definitely do a lot more research on it. And also, as always, I recommend before anybody takes any supplement that they talk to their doctor. I couldn't agree with you more. All right. Thank you, Hazel. That's Hazel. She's my new assistant. You'll probably be hearing a lot from her. But anyway, let's get back to the second part of Jenny's question, CoQ10 and how it affects the skin. Now, as far as using CoQ10 in skincare, I know from firsthand that it's a powerful substance in skincare. In fact, it's one of the very few ingredients that the skin can actually absorb. And studies have shown that it is kind of a sunscreen on steroids. Unlike traditional sun protection chemicals, it doesn't really absorb UV rays, but it acts as a shield that protects your skin and actually boosts the value of a sunscreen. But wait, there's more. It protects the body's natural collagen and CoQ10 also spurs the production of fibroblasts, which are the building blocks of collagen. And I'm not finished. CoQ10 can prevent dark discolorations or dark spots on the skin. It brightens and evens out the skin tones. But CoQ10 is a soluble fat, which means it works the best in a rich, slightly greasy environment. So if you have oily skin or acne-prone skin, CoQ10 is probably not the right ingredient for you. And if you would just try breaking open a capsule and applying it to your skin, it wouldn't hurt your skin, but it, there probably wouldn't be any effect. It needs to be in a rich base, which could trigger breakouts. After a day in the sun, it has the potential to undo the impact of UV rays, which are responsible for up to 80% of what we see as aging skin. So if you do live in a desert climate or a really sunny climate like Arizona or California, this ingredient could be beneficial to you to use all year round and not just on your face. Use it all over your whole body to protect your skin. Now, our next question here comes from Beth. Hi, Beth. (laughs) It's nice to hear from you. I met Beth a while ago online, and we had a great conversation. Now, Beth actually has sent me a question asking about honey. She wants to know if honey's okay for a diabetic to use for healing like cuts or wounds. She says her neighbor uses honey, applies honey to a wound, and her neighbor's a diabetic. And she's a, she thinks that's kind of crazy, but she wants to know if honey really can heal wounds, basically. That's what her question is. Although honey and sugar is not something that a diabetic should be eating, the idea of honey to treat a wound is a little bizarre to most people. But actually, honey is a century-old remedy that can treat a wide range of skin problems. Honey actually has some amazing healing properties, some very powerful healing properties, such as honey is antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, and honey contains powerful antioxidants. Honey has also been shown to produce or stimulate fibroblasts, which is the little fibers that hold the collagen and elastin together. But really, all honey is not alike. Some are more healing, like the darker honeys. They have higher levels of antioxidants. And by health standards, the Manuka honey is considered to be the most effective. Manuka honey comes from bees that dine on the Manuka bush. And it's this honey that's usually used for medical-grade honey. To avoid contamination, honey that's used for skin management is usually treated with radiation to kill stray bacterial and mold spores. While this sounds hyper-technical, 
Medical grade Manuka honey is available. You can get it on Amazon. My favorite way to use honey, besides drinking it in my tea, is to use it in homemade skin masks. You can mix it with egg yolk. You can mix it with yogurt. You can even mix it with a little cornmeal and use it as a scrub. Now, my answer to your question, Beth, is yes, honey can be used as a skin healer. Thank you, Beth and Ginny, for those great questions. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can message me on Facebook, Ask the Beauty Advisor. You can leave your comments and questions on the blog, askthebeautyadvisor.com. Even better, I'd love it if you'd leave me a voicemail. You can go to the blog and leave me a voicemail. I think it'd be so much fun and so interesting, and I'd love to hear your voices. So go to the blog, askthebeautyadvisor.com, and leave me a voicemail. That'd be awesome. All right, so I guess I'll be back here hopefully next week. I think I have an interview for you next week. Really good interview with a young lady. I don't want to promise you anything because... Stuff happens, you know, guests get sick, stuff happens. So hopefully I'll be back here next week with an interview. How's that? That's all we got, folks. The Beauty Advisor is a part of the Beauty Radio Network. If you have a podcast or need help in starting a podcast and would like to be a part of a free, supportive network, then learn more by contacting Deanna at beautyradionetwork.com.